Let's do this like the Brutus. You're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. <sighs> you were just complaining about that, man. Yep. And now you said it to start the episode. <laughs> you can always edit it out. Just put on I, that music. I can't. Let me see if I can remember it. Dang it. No, I can't remember it. Uh, you're joking, right? What music? The song. Oh. For editing over stuff. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's it. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Big Yankovich, and welcome to the Dune Steve's That Gets My Goat. That's what we're calling this, right? <laughs> Not me, but yeah, I, you and I are going to have to agree to disagree. We don't want another civil war. That's uh, right. Ruin. Um, <clears throat> today, we're going to be talking about Captain America colon Civil War. And I think, like the last episode, we have no time. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to say the colon. Oh. Okay. I think it's a silent colon. I wish yours was. Yes, you do. What is that noise? Oh, it's my knee. Sorry, pressing against the dashboard. Oh, okay. Let me turn so my knee does not touch. Turn on knee. All right, so yeah, um, hopefully you've seen the movie because we're going to spoil the shit out of that thing. I'm going to tell you about what happens right at the very end. Just like the trailer did. <laughs> that was something we were discussing on the drive over. Was that uh, you know there were a couple of really neat surprises that I wish had been surprises. J.J. Abrams obviously didn't uh, control the marketing of this movie, and so um, uh, pretty much every surprise I already knew about. And it's too bad. It's just like oh shoot. Like well, there are there are a couple movies, and I've actually said it as though it was a bad thing that are just about to come out this summer. That we've seen nothing for. And it's like, wow, that's coming out already? The um, BFG? Uh, gosh, I, yeah, I don't know. If, if, is it okay to boycott that one, guys? <laughs> but yeah, that like the BFG is one of them where it's just like, wow, that is about to come out? Oh, shoot, I thought that was eight, nine months from now. One of those Christmas releases because we should have seen toys and posters and all sorts of marketing and and yeah, they've kept quiet on that one. Yeah, I was pretty surprised when Keanu came out, and I hadn't seen any toys for that. <sighs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, even with all the many, many things I knew about this movie, um, it was still a lot of fun. And so, uh, you know, go see it. Good night, everybody. Yay! So what things were spoiled? Should we spoil the spoiled things? Well, I, I, you may not have known. Did you know that Ant-Man was in this movie? I did know that Ant-Man was in the movie. You did could see him in some of the trailers as Ant-Man, not as Goliath. Did you know that Black Panther was going to be in this movie? Yes, I did know that Black Panther And then, was you know, the big one. Did you know Spider-Man was going to be in this movie? And yeah, I did see the trailer with Spider-Man, but I already knew that Spider-Man was going to be in there. I wasn't that clueless. But did you know that Hawkeye and Vision and Scarlet Witch and Black Widow and... Uh, I'm probably missing some of your war machine. We're all going to be in this movie. Yes, I did see all of them in the trailers as well. They were pretty, pretty prominently placed. So unless you were really not paying attention, um, or you never saw the trailers. I mean, I guess that's possible. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I wonder, and this is probably a topic for another conversation, but I wonder how cool that would have been to see some of these people show up and not know they were going to show up. Cause like, if you watch the way the movie's put together, like when Clint Barton shows up, when Hawkeye shows up, that's meant to be a surprise. Yeah, which... it that one seemed like it was surprised. Early on when they talk about Clint, uh, he's retired now. I thought, oh, sir not appearing in this movie has been mentioned now. I assumed he wasn't going to be coming. I mean, it sounded like, you know, the mention of uh, Jane Foster in Avengers. It was like, oh, yes, we've moved her to a safe place, and she's going to remain there for the interim of this film. I mean, incident. <laughs> well, uh, Thunderbolt Ross, uh, who we, we haven't seen in eight years, yeah. says, do you know the whereabouts of Thor and Banner? And that's your one line there with the two. Well, I guess we get a later reference to Banner. But, uh, yeah, there, there are those things where it's like, well, we got to explain where everybody is because almost everybody else came back. Yeah. You know. And that's good because in, in other movies we've talked about, in Captain America 2, where, you know, the, the, these giant helicarriers are going to start killing everybody and they're going into battle against 
all of Hydra all by themselves. Why? We just saw the Avengers movie, so we know there's no reason for them to go in there all by themselves. Why didn't we call in Iron Man and Thor to help out? They'd make a lot shorter work of those helicarriers than, you know, Captain America and Falcon would have. But wasn't even addressed. At least in this case, they address it. I, I do like that. It's better than it's just, nah, we're not going to mention them because they're not in the movie. So we're going to hope you don't notice and don't think about it. It's like I remember seeing the cartoon of the Justice League from, uh, I think it was early 2000s or late 90s, somewhere around there. And in that cartoon, Batman was curmudgeonly. He was... Uh, he didn't play well with others. That's right. Yeah, he didn't want to be part of the Super Friends. And so there was an episode, I don't know, a couple episodes in, where they're like, this thing is going on and we've got these people with us. Uh, Batman says he's busy. And yeah, that's all you got about Batman. Batman's just said, F you, I'm doing something else. I've got to go into the sewers and chase Killer Croc today. So, you know, you guys do whatever, save the world. He's like, well, we've got Flash, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and Cyborg. Boy, I sure wish Batman were here. <laughs> right. Sorry, that's a tangent. But uh, the amazing thing is how many people came back for this. And I, I don't know the full backstory on how that happened, except for that initially Robert Downey Jr. was supposed to have a very small part. Because, you know, he, he, he had been vocal that he was done with all this. and Yeah, he, he hurt himself on Iron Man 3, right? And right. He and like, he didn't, I'm too old for this he, shit. He didn't, uh, <laughs> he didn't want to do it anymore. And then somehow he totally changed his mind and asked that his part be beefed up. And I, again, we don't know the negotiating tactics that he used. If he asked for his paycheck to be beefed up also or anything like that. But my understanding was once Robert Downey Jr. showed that much enthusiasm, then all these other people were just like, oh, yeah, okay, sign me up. And we got uh, what was ostensibly an, an Avengers 3. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. I was just going to mention that. I mean, why didn't they just call this Avengers 3 at this point? Because almost everybody that was in Avengers 2 was in this film, I guess. You can't call it Avengers if it doesn't have Thor in the Hulk. <laughs> well, they they called them the Avengers, so I, I I don't know. But my reasoning is that, yeah, this was a sequel to Captain America Winter Soldier more than anything. I mean, it was also a sequel to Age of Ultron. Um, and and in, in little ways, it was a sequel to Iron Man 3, you know. And a prequel to Spider-Man uh, Homecoming. Little way it was a sequel to ant-man but not yeah. really but yeah but more than everything it was a, a sequel to winter soldier but, but but the thing that was interesting was how much it felt like it resolved questions asked by age of ultron and winter soldier and iron man 3 you know what i mean it's just like the as the year has gone by the flaws in Age of Ultron seem to have become more apparent, and people say, well, what about this? And I go, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, I guess. But it, it, this felt like a follow-up to that movie in, in many ways, too, and uh, you know, it dealt with what happened in that movie, and it, I mean, it dealt with almost everything that happened in that movie. We still didn't... I guess Tony was dealing with the fact that he created Ultron, and everything that happened in that movie was his fault. I mean, he said that, right? in this movie. But yeah, it, it expected you to have seen all of those movies. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It didn't yeah. really explain who people were and what their backstories were and what happened in the previous movies. We got that little Thunderbolt Ross scene where he showed what happened in Avengers and showed what happened in Winter Soldier and showed what happened in Avengers 2. But, you know, eight seconds of each uh, and it was in, in, important to the story to the point they were trying to make, which again still feels like it's flying in the face of the wanton destruction in Man of Steel. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It just, uh, they're, they're the two mindsets for making movies and, and the Avengers movies have always been a lot more about helping people and trying to 
rescue as many people as possible. They didn't focus on however many people would have died in Sokovia. They focused on how many people they got out of Sokovia, how many people they rescued. And you mean in Ian, the Avengers? Ian Avengers. Movie. Okay, yeah. I was going to say because they did focus on that's how many all they talked in about this. in this. Over and over again, they kept talking about these things, and it was just like, we need to be put in check. Why do we need to be put in check? Aliens came to invade the Earth. We staved them off, and it was our fault that there were some people that were killed in the process. The, the government was taken over by this Hydra organization and was set to kill thousands upon thousands of people. We stopped them, and it was our fault that the helicarriers crashed on top of the Triskelion. I don't know, just seeing all that stuff, it makes me think of the BS premise behind The Incredibles, where they're like, these people, this man who jumped off the building didn't want to be saved. You didn't save my life, you ruined my death. And then the people that were saved in the train sued because, you know, they got whiplash instead of being completely mangled in the train that fell off the, uh, are people really that shitty? Are people so shitty that they're going to complain, hey, you saved my life, but you didn't, I mean, I, 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 I broke a nail in the process. And so I'm really mad at you. Yeah, well, there's that line in Superman 2. Remember when Metropolis is being destroyed and and it's wholesale destruction. And I mean, it's a Richard Lester line. It's not in the other version. But, <laughs> you know, there's all this destruction and people fleeing and a woman goes, who's going to pay for it? You know, as a kid, that never bothered me. But now I'm just like, whoa, why is that line in there? Yeah, but there's also the part where there's the wanton destruction. And there's the one guy on in the phone booth who just won't give up on his call. And he holds on to the phone as the bad guys are blowing their super breath. And they're yeah. blowing everything away. And the phone booth tips over. And he still hangs on to the phone set. And he's saying, hey, hello? Hello? Are you still there? I don't know what he says, but... Your Honor, my client is dropping all charges. <laughs> we apologize for wasting the court's time today, and uh, <laughs> we we request a short recess. Yeah, that, that belongs in some other movie. It's Yeah, the slapstick in that. That's, <laughs> those scenes are just, oh, wow, that's rough. Anyway. Anyhow, sorry, guys. Um, okay, well, well, let's talk about the Civil War premise, because... I don't know how much time I've wasted of yours, but I've spent an inordinate amount of time over the last year trying to think of how I would do this if, if I were making a movie and, and how to justify people being on opposite sides. And when I found out which side certain people would be on, I was like, okay, I'm a writer. How would I pit Black Widow against Captain America despite all that they have been through together. And it was hard. It was mental gymnastics. So I want to ask you what you thought of how they handled which side are you on? You know, Black Widows didn't sit well with me. I don't even remember what the hell she said. But she was right off on, on the side you wouldn't expect her to be on. Uh, Black Widow was used as a tool of the state. Yeah, she was a winter soldier, basically. For her early life. And we saw how damaged she was because of it in other movies. And I can't see her ever deciding, yes, I will be a tool of the state forever. Maybe uh, she already was, though. Maybe I'm just being stupid. I mean, she was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was a agency of the state. So it's not like she was just some autonomous. She wasn't Spider-Man just saving people in the streets of Brooklyn. Or, sorry, Queens. So maybe I don't get her. But yeah, she said, um, maybe blah, 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 blah. And yeah, her argument was maybe we can steer if we've got one hand on the wheel. You know, if if if, if we're on the inside, maybe we can help decide where we make a difference. 
but yeah, I don't, it seems like a, a, a lot of it's hard to buy into because, you know, they just came from Avengers 1 where the World Council has decided to launch a nuclear strike on New York. And the Avengers have to save us from the aliens and from ourselves. And now they're saying, oh no, the Avengers need to, they're the ones that need to be put in check. We need to put them under the direction of a bunch of politicians. I mean, I, I'm, I'm obviously on Captain America's side, which I suppose you're supposed to be. It just seems hard to believe that anybody is, uh, is behind that. All these, you know, soulless politicians. They're the ones that should, you know, it, it makes me think back to, I guess there was uh, Dark Knight Returns, the old, the super famous comic series. You didn't call it a book, right? Because it was several. It was a, yeah, a miniseries, or if you want to call it, or you can call it a graphic novel if you okay. want, but it was four issues. So that one, in that one, at this point, Superman is somehow a tool of the state. He's basically the U.S. Army. They just say, Superman, go kill. And he just goes and, like, breaks tanks and twists the gun barrel and ties them into knots and stuff like that. <laughs> he gets no respect whatsoever for doing that, which, why would he? Batman is the hero of that book because, you know, he didn't go that way. <laughs> he was happier to retire than to become something like that. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. The premise is really hard to pull off. To pit these guys against each other over just some woman he meets in the hallway. And why did he even talk to that lady? He acted like he had to go to the bathroom and then he didn't. And he went and started talking to this woman. And I assumed she was like somebody I should recognize because she looked vaguely familiar. Maybe I've just seen her in different movies. I don't know what the deal was. But I looked at her and I was like... Was she on the World Council? Was she... Who was this person? Why is he talking to her? And then she's just like, eh, I'm mad because my kid was in Sokovia. You killed him. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that she knew that Sokovia was in danger because Tony Stark had created this being. Yeah. But she just blamed Tony because the Avengers... Came in blasting away. I guess I, I... The Avengers tried to evacuate all these people and, and prevent this 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 city from destroying the entire Earth. I don't know. I, I guess it goes back to our people that shitty. And <laughs> and I, I you know, losing your kid in some tragic circumstance is not a petty thing. It's, it's horrible and it would ruin, scar you forever. But Tony has been cocky and arrogant and full of himself and he zigs when somebody tells him to zag just because they told him to zag they well they were trying to make tony sympathetic because they could have gone the comic way and tony was not too sympathetic in the comic book version of this story and so yeah they just they, he had a lot of guilt he had lost pepper because of his hubris i guess it's Sir not appearing in this film, I guess. I, yeah. I I wonder if they asked her, you know, asked Gwyneth, hey, would you come back for one scene? You know, Tony's going to be helping Rhodey try and walk again. We just need you to show up for 45 minutes and record three lines and then you can go. You don't have to dye your hair. We'll just give you a wig. <laughs> I don't know what happened on that, but uh, she felt like the only person that didn't come back that could have. How much damage do you think movie star's hair takes from the uh, constant dying and re-dying and dying again and cutting and growing? and? I'm sure Scarlett Johansson's hair is just fine. It probably costs 20 grand every time they dye her hair red. And it actually rejuvenates her hair. And, <laughs> you know, it's thicker afterward than it was before. It's dyed with... Using nano bots that go in and actually repair her hair and add follicles. 
to her scalp to make it fuller. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyhow, I just, uh, I, I, I thought that the filmmakers took great pains to explain everybody's motivation and to have everybody have at least a little bit of empathy for the other side or uh, hesitation, uh, you know, just a... It was really rare to get the impression that w these former teammates wanted to kill one another. Um, and, and, you know, and there, there at the end, I guess, that was that was what was going on. I don't know. They, they could have made it more villainous. But uh, at the same time, you know, Thunderbolt Ross is a Marvel supervillain. And they could have had him be, be way more villainous, too. And, and They may get there. He's not dead. He, he has plenty of reason to be angry. I don't know. I mean, they, they didn't play up his villainy at all. He just seemed like a bureaucrat who was fed up with all these other people that were doing what he should be doing and, and all that stuff. But they could have had him obsessed with Banner and super-powered people and... And all that stuff. And the way that he was in the comics, where he's just, you know, eh, chomping at the bit, constantly wanting to blow things up and stuff. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I admired the way the filmmakers took their time setting up people's motivations. And, you know, there's a scene between Vision and Scarlet Witch where they just talk. And, you know, and then and and Vision's, Vision's just wearing like a cardigan or something the whole time. Uh, I thought that was interesting. That's weird. <laughs> to see yeah. Vision just wearing like some slacks and a and a nice. <laughs> it was just weird, yeah, because he's so a odd nice looking. Cravat. And uh, <laughs> remind me, did he phase in Age of Ultron, or was that just a new ability that he had in this movie? I don't remember. I don't either. But uh, I liked that, and then the other thing that I really, really liked, and I, I watched an interview with the Russo brothers that directed this, and they said that, and they, they had that same idea of, that Stan Lee did, uh, that every character is somebody's favorite character. And he, they said, we sat down before we made this movie and tried to make every character have a good line and something interesting to do, a cool moment, so that if you were a, if you came into this movie because you're a fan of Hawkeye you would get something cool for Hawkeye to do. And, and they, you know, went down the list of all the characters had to have something. And, and I noticed that. I was just like, yeah, everybody gets stuff to do. Everybody gets a fight. Everybody gets, a, you know, a cool stunt or, or action thing. And, and uh, you know, Spider-Man could easily have been Nick Fury at the end of Iron Man. Just a scene that they shot on one day and he's he, he might as well not have been in there. He could have been... A Hawkeye in Thor, where right. they shot it afterward when they realized they had the rights to Spider-Man. But no, he felt like an organic part of this movie and, you know, got an introductory scene where he and Tony sit down and talk for four or five minutes, right? Yeah. And that just to set up, you know, Spider-Man is in our universe now and, and, and all that stuff. I, I Anyway, I just, I, I thought that the characters were really, really handled well and, uh, I was totally satisfied that, by that. More satisfied than I was by Age of Ultron that had, you know, the same number of characters. This felt more similar to Avengers 1 as far as the characters and having something to do and having at least some interesting lines and stuff like that. I mean, Spider-Man, he really accounted for himself well in this film. I think, you know, he, he was involved in the big fight, kicked a lot of butt. And was fun, too, you know, the way he kept chattering and, oh, yeah, carbon fiber wings, is that, you know, all the... All the... <laughs> I don't know if you've been in a fight before, but there's not usually this much talking. Yeah, I, th I thought it was fun. They gave him a, a lot of good stuff to do and say, and, you know, it seems like they kind of get his character. Yeah, this, I felt like this movie did for Spider-Man what Avengers did for Hulk, where... We had seen some lackluster Hulk stuff, and people just weren't as interested in that character. But in the right hand, suddenly the character comes to life. You know, where you're like, oh yeah, I forgot why I loved Spider-Man. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what else you want to talk about. The, well, the, the scene at the airport, it, that was just 
amazing, man. Um, I watched, I've seen it twice now and I watched, I paid close attention to like, how did they decide who fights who? And, and it just, oh, it, it carried on. It's a long sequence with ups and downs and one side winning. And then the next side starts winning and, and that, and yeah. And then the, the giant man thing happens, which is just amazing. I, uh, you know, I, I was not thrilled with Ant-Man, that movie. And, and suddenly it's like, wow, this guy is great. And, and seeing them all try and fight Ant-Man was r- really cool. It, yeah. They gave, uh, Scarlet Witch a ton of stuff to do. They don't, do they ever call her Scarlet Witch? Should I start calling her Wanda Maximoff? I don't know if they ever called her that. She just has so much you can call her interesting Scarlet. stuff that her powers can do. And it was mostly trying to protect people, you know, making shields and stuff like that. And, and, and she was kind of the only person that could really counter Vision, who was super powerful and seems, you know, like he could take the whole bunch if he really wanted to. I felt like they were building a romance between those two. Where there, I didn't feel like there was anything in Age of Ultron between those two. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the one character that I thought didn't come off as well as you'd hope, especially considering that he's got his own movie coming up, is the uh, Black Panther. He just never felt sympathetic to me in any in any of his stuff. I mean, even at the very end where he finally realizes that he's been wrong and he doesn't you know it's not like oh i see i uh, I was trying to kill the wrong guy now i'm gonna kill you Ah, there i win you know we didn't have that he finally learned that he was doing things wrong and i mean that's somewhat sympathetic but the whole time he was he was never a fun character there was never anything about him that was anything but super serious and straight laced and and uninteresting. I thought he looked cool. He did look cool. And the actor seems like a cool dude, but... So he doesn't make you want to go out and see Black Panther, huh? Not, Not really. Yeah, he just he had no humor. He had no side of him other than angry, I'm going to kill Bucky Barnes side. That was all there was to him. Which... uh I guess it's fine if that if he was just in this film, but we're building basically towards his sequel that comes off of this, and doesn't make me think, oh, I got to get out and see that. And they even, you know, that was the mid credit scene was the Black Panther teaser, whereas the post credit scene was the Spider Man teaser. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't, didn't make me think, oh, I gotta see that. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to see T'Challa keep people from coming to Wakanda and taking the Avengers away. Or whatever <laughs> the plot actually turns out to be. Did you feel differently? Did you find him sympathetic? And um, Well, I mean, we, we when we first meet him, he's not angry or heartbroken because his father has died you know he's he's a sort of a politician kind of thing and i i like the accent and the actor seems charismatic but you're right uh, he is a secondary antagonist through most of the movie he really really handles himself well i mean just the the suit looks good and all of his powers he you know he could go toe to toe with anybody Although yeah. they almost everybody seemed pretty evenly matched in this, except for uh, when they were all f- fighting uh, Winter Soldier, and he, you know, they yeah they didn't explain. Well, they didn't explain how Peter got his powers either. But uh, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, Black uh, Panther did seem like a match for Captain America or Bucky. You know, they both they all seem to run super fast and super strength and super. Agility, yeah, and super hand to hand combat training. Tough, you know, they can take a whole lot of punches before. Uh, that's one of those things that all superheroes seem to have: is super beat on ability. You can beat on them for a long time, and the bones don't break. The muscles just keep on functioning despite the uh, extreme abuse that they've taken. 
Everybody had a black eye in this movie. <laughs> Pretty much the whole way through, they all had a black eye. She's had black widow. Yeah. She just had a black widow. Yes, that's true. Um, I, you know, yeah, I guess, I guess, um, Black Panther is one of the more dour characters in this movie, but for a lot of the movie, it was really fun. Um, you know, if you had Black Panther on one side, you have Spider-Man as the one on the opposite end of just, uh, I mean, it, it was a joy that whole, every time Spider-Man interacted with anybody during the fight or before the fight, I, I, oh, I just loved it. I mean, we haven't seen him in a team dynamic before. Mm-hmm. And it was, I felt like they handled it perfectly. And, uh, there may actually be a disappointment next year when you don't see <laughs> Spider-Man interacting with all these other teammates. It's, it's, you know, he's just on his own, but, um, uh, they got that humor right and they got his look right. Yeah. He seemed really powerful in this movie. Yeah. And he is. He's just, but he's one of those guys that always pulls his punches. I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting going back to Black Panther. I don't know that I've ever seen him be super sympathetic. I've mean, seen him in, in Avengers cartoons and stuff like that. And he's always a pretty serious, uh, no, never like the fun character. He's not the, the one you want to hang out with and go have drinks with. I don't know. He's the king of Wakanda, so he, he can't be super cool. I guess, but Thor is royalty too, and and Thor is fun. Yeah, but Thor is like drunkard royalty. He's not <laughs> like serious royalty. Okay. He's like at the table saying, more mead! I don't, I, mean, I don't know, maybe... It's a different p- place, but everywhere I've ever seen uh, Black Panther, he was never like the... He's not that fun character. He's more of the Jessica Jones variety character who's just not fun. Well, Captain America, by nature of being the Boy Scout and the Man Out of Time, is often, the you know, the the sober one. It has to be den mother and okay guys yeah we've had some laughs but kind of thing and and yeah yeah i never was on i never felt he was unsympathetic in this i mean it was his movie yeah yeah i, I during the year leading up to this i i came up with scenarios you know for that i would come up with just to see you know and i thought well what if steve's side is wrong and tony's side is right what would that be like? And, you know, maybe that would work. And, I, you know, I came up with... There are people who think that. I mean, I saw a blog post, which I didn't click on because I hadn't seen the movie yet. So I didn't want to spoil anything. But in this blog post, they said, The stupid movie makers turned Captain America into a libertarian asshole in this movie. And I thought, huh. That was the headline of the uh, article, the blog post. And I just thought, weird. Well, is that clickbait? And then you go to that article and you're like, but they never say the word asshole or (laughs) weird. Uh, I I mean, I guess I can see if, if you were a huge Tony Stark fan, I guess I can see you saying, you know, if Steve were just less pig headed and full of himself and all that stuff. I had heard a lot of people quote that I, sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth line. But again, it's just like, Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of Tony from the very beginning has been a flawed guy mm-hmm. and a smart ass and, uh, you know, a guy that's troublesome and, and likes to stir things up and doesn't get along with other people or what, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, I just, I, I, I felt like because Downey is such a good actor, I bought the, you know, when he would deliver these lines but it's, uh, yeah, I was always in Cap's corner. Did you feel bad that uh, Crossbone buys it? I did. So early on, just like a freak. I mean, it wasn't as bad as uh, Von Baron, Strucker. Yeah, Baron Von Strucker in the Avengers movie. But, but... Von Strucker was an empty, worthless death. Someday yeah. I got to ask Joss, what, what, why, what, what, what the hell? 
you wrote that scene that set him up as so cool at the end of Winter Soldier. What? <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, in weird. this, I guess, I mean, he was the catalyst for, at least for, for Scarlet Witch's feelings of, of maybe we should be better or we're irresponsible or those deaths are on my hands and all that. And I was just impressed in Winter Soldier that he'd lived. That I was like, wow, they didn't kill that guy. That, that, that impressed me. And At the end or... Yeah, at the end of Winter Soldier, that he survived. I was like, wow, they didn't even kill Crossbones. That's wow. so cool. And then, yeah, they kill him in the first action sequence in this, but he's pretty much the only one who did die. It was kind of it was kind of like Batrock the Leaper, who really didn't get his ju- his due. <laughs> he's a really special villain, <laughs> and he didn't get you know he he got one quick fight at the start of. Uh, the last Captain America movie, and and yeah, now we don't, you know, I'd love to see him leap and leap because he loves you. to leap. That Rock the Leaper <laughs> is like a D list villain below Stilt Man on everybody's list of who's cool, <laughs> dude. He's so Stilt Man, oh, he's, <laughs> he's so huge. On what is it, Spider Man or is it the Avengers where? The cartoon where he's got like he keeps showing up and he's like, "I'm Batrock. I love to leap." <laughs> Does he really say, "I love to leap"? <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Leap, leap." <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a bummer. They keep doing that with with these villains, and I, it, you know, you've got, I guess you've got tons. I mean, you've got Thanos out there to fight, so who cares if Crossbones is still around or the Serpent Society or what's that? What's the girl? I mean, the shoot is Red, Red Skull is dead. Is, is that what we're to be led to believe? Because he's never reappeared. This is the third Captain America movie, and he's Captain America's arch enemy. You yeah, I see. I don't really understand that myself. You don't even have to get Hugo Weaving t- to come back to play him. Because his face is a skull. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not you sure what You just have happened. an extra play him. Just a guy that walks around, and then you just CG his face. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he'll come back at some point. I would hope so. I, I'd love to see so, or some kind of uh, Masters of Evil kind of thing. or You know, I'd, I'd like to see the leader come back, and I know that's never going to happen. <laughs> but there are tons and tons. I mean, we got Zemo in this one. Who I, I assume is supposed to be Baron Zemo, but he wasn't the Baron. Yeah, he's the second Baron Zemo. He's, there's the one from World War Two that you know was the one that got the stuff on his face and and when he tried to pull the, the mask. mask off. Yeah, it, it tore off his face, and then his son was this one was Helmet Zemo. But so he got stuff on his helmet. <laughs> when I tried to take it off, it tore his face off. Oh gosh, I hope not. That, that was a very accident-prone family. <laughs> but I think the uh, the this Zemo, at least for once, if they didn't kill yeah, him, at he's the end. just in prison, and they're like, "Yeah, you're you failed." And he's like, "Did I?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's. Mine talk about... is an evil laugh. <laughs> Wait, I don't think he laughed, did he? He did. Uh, let's talk about that, though. What did you think of Zemo's motivations? What did you think of his plan? Because the first time I saw this movie, that was the only flaw that I saw in the movie. It was, oh, oh, so Tony had to come on his own for for his plan to work. But the second time I saw it, I was like, well, he had that videotape. He could have uploaded it to the internet. He could have done any number of things. He just It just happened to land the way that he wanted it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he did call the hotel and get the woman to bring up his breakfast, even though he wasn't there anymore, and find the dead body, which set that stuff in motion. So you could say that he it was all part of his plan. But yeah, I mean, yeah, he could he could probably, you know, do stuff secondary or tertiary plans that he might have that he would do in case nothing happens if he just sat there at that bunker and nobody came those other four or maybe it was five it was five super soldiers i have to admit i was really bummed that they got killed because i didn't know what was coming i thought we were going to see a fight <clears throat> against these dudes they set them up as bad asses yeah. i was like oh geez but uh yeah who knows i mean maybe they can survive bullets to the head and heal. Maybe. 
those super soldiers have shown themselves to be in- extremely resilient. Steve survived 70 years in, in ice. ice. Yeah. Of course, that, I guess that's what these guys were doing, too. They were in uh, planned ice freezing, but... But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I liked the movie a lot. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'd have to probably see it again to decide whether I liked it better. Better than Captain America colon hey. Winter Soldier. Oh, wait, was that colon silent as well? Because as far as the Captain America series goes, Winter Soldier was the standard. It was the, it was the best one by far. Where this one ranks with it, it's hard to say uh, just yet. But I liked it. I liked it a lot. And I would definitely recommend you see it uh, if you haven't. But if you haven't, what the hell are you listening for still? We just ruined the whole damn thing. Well, as far as I know, there's no plans for a Captain America 4. And and there, I think Kevin Feige, the producer of all these movies, has said that there'll be an announcement later in the year of what's coming you know not around the corner but the corner after that and and maybe that'll be on there yeah i'm willing to bet that it will be i guess with the television we talked about you know okay so daredevil is popular and they come up with it well we're going to do a second season of daredevil and then jessica jones is popular and they say well we're going to do a second season of jessica jones and we're going to do a punisher spin-off but they're coming up with these other movies, these standalones. You know, it's not all sequels. We're going to get a Captain Marvel movie and a Black Panther movie and a Doctor Strange movie this year. And um, just like when Ant-Man was successful, they quickly announced and sort of shuffled their schedule for a sequel to Ant-Man. And uh, my guess is that the Civil War is going to be very, very successful. I, it may outgross Age of Ultron. And so you would naturally want to talk about doing a a follow-up to this, even though I guess we've got an Avengers follow-up, which is made by the same people and could easily be, you know, well, we're just going to pick up where Civil War left off and see how Tony and and Steve can get along after this. You know, it was Zemo right. And uh, maybe... Infinity War Part 1 will be a putting the band back together kind of movie where it's like, well, some bad stuff is happening and we need to put our differences aside and all work together. And But, but I don't know. We don't know yet. And uh, But yes, I, I, I would think that we're going to get a Spider-Man sequel in the future and, and a Captain America sequel. And do you go to an Iron Man? Do you do an Iron Man 4? Or is that ship sailed and we're like... I don't know. I don't know if Iron Man needs to have his solo movies anymore. He works so good around other people. I like him in an Avengers... You know, he he had a lot to do in this movie. Yeah. It wasn't just a cameo. I mean, he was the second lead in this movie. And so um, it'll be fun to see him pop up again. And I'm assuming he's in Infinity War, but we don't know. But Iron Man will return. That's right. Spider-Man will return, and so will a lot of other people. So that announcement should be made later this summer. Is that the? We don't know when, though. Just well, I just I read an interview last summer. night, and he said, you know, I'm not ready to make any announcements because people are saying, well, what's coming? Uh, you know, what else are you gonna? And he said, we've got it all planned out, but we're not going to announce it yet. That by the end of the year, you'll have, you'll know what's coming. You know, in phase four. And all right. Well, I guess uh, we can look forward to that. And there's still a lot of Phase 3 to go, so we got plenty of... Uh, we've got two Avengers movies to see before uh, we even get to the start of Phase 4. So, that's cool. So far, it's still so good. Yeah, this one I was a really solid movie, and I have seen it twice, you haven't. But it holds up the second viewing... I, you know, I was able to notice little things that I didn't notice the first time, or I was able to notice things that they set up that they paid off later. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, that's cool. Knowing that it was coming and it was good stuff. I, I, I dig it. Oh, uh, one thing that he did say though, was, um, we've had a, a bunch of breakout characters and a bunch of, you know, characters that people have responded to well, 
the one that I want to do a movie with the most is Black Widow. He he says he that's his priority is to get a solo Black Widow movie huh, in cool. phase four. And so yeah, I would see that in a second. <clears throat> yeah, I, that sounds good. I, I I guess we could have talked longer, but why why would we? Let's Well, just... we're kinda of running out of time too, so there is that. All right. Well, thanks for listening to uh, to another that gets my goat, everybody. Um, yeah, that's we're getting into the summer season, and there's so many movies in the summer, and I don't want to go see any of them. So maybe that'll be a discussion for another time. I just, ugh, yeah. yeah. If there's something that you really, really want to see us hear us, yeah, hear us review. Maybe, I don't know, make a suggestion on Facebook or something, or in the comments to this episode or something like that where we can talk it over and, uh, and, you know, consider it. Cause the trailer for Rogue One came up before this movie. And I think that was when you lean into that's the other movie that I have to see this year. year. And other than that, you know, you'll probably, I mean, you'll see a bunch of other movies. But none of them you figure are must-sees. So if there's something you think is a must-see, a must, you want to hear us talk about it, let us know. And uh, we'll consider it. Yeah, if it's Neighbors 2, well, okay. Don't, don't, does it have to be Neighbors 2? If it's, if it's Angry Birds. <laughs> no, guys, please don't do that. Uh, not even as a, a joke. Somebody might take you seriously. <laughs> Angry Birds. Okay, I have been Rish Outfield, and I am Team Cap. And I have been Big Inklevich, and I am Team Jacob. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, we can't be friends, man. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, everybody. See ya. Good night. <laughs> Don't cuff again. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons 3.0, attribution, no derivatives, share-alike license. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it with everybody. It also means you have too much time on your hands. And all that, and so... Jesus. Uh Uh-oh, hold on. Let's see how much time we got left. Not much. Nope, not much. He works so good around other people. It just I, I'm your wife. Sorry, say that part again. It works so good. It just plays every sounder twice every time I get a text. I should have. Why? Why? Just in case you didn't hear it the first time.